the stories of mahabharata retold by shudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how krishna's words of wisdom helped arjun clear his doubts and shake off his weakness now the battle of kurukshetra is just about to begin yudhishthir stood up on his chariot and looked at the battlefield in front of him he saw the huge armies of the kauravas and the pandavas waiting in anticipation with every moment the soldiers were getting impatient and could hardly wait to pounce upon their enemy it seemed the great war would begin any moment now suddenly Yudhishthir put down his weapon on the chariot floor and took off his armor. Then he dismounted his chariot and with folded palms began to walk towards the Kaurav army. His brothers were puzzled to say the least. "Brother, where are you going? Why are you walking towards the enemy unarmed? What is it you are trying to achieve? Please tell us." Yudhishthir didn't answer. and kept on walking bhim arjun nakul and sahadev dismounted from their chariots and followed their elder brother the generals and soldiers of the pandav army were confused and looked at krishna to find some answer krishna only smiled and raised his arm to assure them the kaurava army was confused too some said Yudhishthir must be scared and wants to surrender to Bhishma. Other said, "But why? He has his gallant brothers by his side. The truth is, the Pandavas are no match against the great warriors like Bhishma, Dron, Karna. Even the gods are scared of Bhishma. The Pandavas cannot be the real Shatrias. No Shatriya would surrender before the war." The Kauravas began to wave their flags in joy as if they have already won the war. Yudhishthir stepped up to Bhishma's chariot and touched his feet. "O oh, great grandfather, it is an honor to fight an indomitable warrior like you. Please give us your permission to engage with you in battle and bless us such that we can win this war." Bhishma smiled and touched Yudhishthir's head. "O oh, king, if you hadn't come to me like this, I would have been disappointed and would have cursed you for defeat. Your humility pleases me. You have my blessings to be the winner of this great war and achieve all that you wish for. It is my misfortune that I have to fight on behalf of the Kauravas." they have enslaved me with money and i cannot turn my back on them like a coward i have to admit i do not have the guts to defy the kauravas and fight for you except for that you may ask me whatever you want yudhishthir said sir i don't ask you to fight for us all i ask is your advice I am your enemy. What advice do you want from me? said Bhishma. Yudhishthir touched Bhishma's feet again and said, "Grandfather, everybody knows you are undefeatable. Still, you bless us to win the war. How can we win the war as long as you are alive? If you really want us to win the war, tell me, how can we defeat you?" Bhishma smiled. "You are right. I don't know of any man who can defeat me. Besides, I don't intend to die now. Come back later 
and I might tell you how to defeat me. Yudhishthir knew the great old Kaurava wouldn't give up so easy. However, Bhishma's concluding remarks gave him some hope. Thank you, grandfather, for your blessing. I will come to you again for your help. He bowed to Bhishma and walked away. Yudhishthir then walked up to Drone's chariot. With his palms folded, Yudhishthir circled around Drone and then touched his feet. O oh Lord, you are our teacher, our guru. On behalf of the Pandavas, I come here to seek your blessings and your permission to engage in battle with you. Please, advise us, how can we destroy our enemy? Drone smiled and raised his hand to bless Yudhishthir. I am glad you came to me before the war began. Else, I'd have cursed you to your defeat. You know how much I love you and your brothers. It is unfortunate that I cannot join you in battle. Kauravas are my masters and I can't be disloyal to them. Still, I wish you victory. Krishna is on your side. Nobody can defeat you. Yudhishthi said, O oh, great drone, nobody can defeat you in the battlefield. As long as you fight this war, I don't know how we can defeat the Kauravas and emerge victorious. Drone said, You are right. When I have my weapons in hand, nobody in this world can kill me. However, if somebody whom I trust delivers me a really bad news that breaks my heart, news that would rob me of my desire to live, I drop my weapons, give up fighting and wait for death. Only then someone might be able to kill me. Yudhishthir then went to meet his other teacher, Kripacharya. O oh, great Kripacharya, you are indomitable in battle. I don't know how we can win this war when you fight for the Kauravas. I ask for your blessing. Kripa blessed Yudhishthir and said, My dear Yudhishthir, you know, my loyalty binds me to the throne of Hastinapur. You are right. Nobody can kill me in battle. But every morning when I wake up, I will pray for your victory. Yudhishthir then went to his uncle Shalya, bowed and touched his feet and asked for his blessing. Shalya said, I am happy to see you. It is really unfortunate that I couldn't join your side. Tell me, how else can I help you? Yudhishthir said, Dear uncle, you had once promised that during the war you would make all efforts to demoralize Karna. I pray that you keep your promise. Shalya blessed Yudhishthir and said, Don't worry, Yudhishthir. I will fulfill my promise. I will speak so mean of Karna that he would lose his concentration and his will to fight. Yudhishthir then walked back to his army. Just before mounting his chariot, he turned back to the Kauravas and shouted, Dear warriors of the Kaurava army, we are about to engage in a great war. We have chosen our sides due to various reasons. For some, you might not have had any choice but to stick to the side you were asked to join. However, it is still not too late. If anyone of you would like to join us, join the side of Dharma, please reveal yourself. We will accept you with open arms. For a while, there was silence on both sides. Nobody expected Yudhishthir to make such a proposal. Suddenly, a man walked out of the Kaurava army. It was Jujutsu, one of the hundred brothers of Duryodhan. Jujutsu stepped up and said, Yudhishthir, 
I am sick and tired of serving my evil brother Duryodhan. He would never listen to reason. If you would be kind enough to accept me, I would like to join you and fight for you. Yudhishthir walked up to Jujutsu and embraced him. Welcome, my brother. You have made the correct decision. Let's join hands and fight those stupid brothers of yours. At least, you live to perform the last rites of your father, Dhritarashtra. In the meantime, Krishna stepped aside to meet Karna, who was waiting by the sidelines of the battlefield. Krishna came to him and said, I hear you have not decided to fight as long as Bhishma is alive. I have a proposal for you. As long as Bhishma is alive, why don't you fight on behalf of the Pandavas? After Bhishma's demise, if you want, you can go back to the Kauravas and fight on their behalf. Karna gave a disgusted look and said, Krishna, it seems you haven't quite understood me as yet. Listen to this for one last time. I will never do anything to harm my dear friend Duryodhan. I am his well-wisher and I am willing to sacrifice my life for his sake. Krishna nodded and walked back to Archun's chariot. Yudhishthir mounted his chariot and put on his armor. The other Pandava brothers mounted their chariots. The war drums began to beat. Trumpets and bugles rang out around the battlefield. The horses neighed. The elephants roared. The generals blew their conch shells as the chariots began to roll. The two armies moved towards each other and the great battle began. Duryodhan, Dusashan, along with their twelve brothers guarded Bhishma as he moved towards the Pandava army. Abhimanyu, along with Draupadi's five sons, Nakul, Sahadev and Drishtadumnya attacked Duryodhana with a volley of arrow. Bhishma swung away his chariot and engaged Arjun in one-on-one -on -one combat. Deadly arrows from each warrior left the bows but failed to hit the target because the opponent's arrow struck and destroyed them in mid-air. Watching their fierce battle, the other warriors got excited and they pounced upon their enemies with full vigor. Satyaki fought with Krita Varma, Abhimannu with the Koshal king Brihadbal, Bhim with Duryodhan, Nakul with Dusashan, Sahadev with Durmuk, and Yudhishthir with Shalya. Soon, the battlefield turned into a violent mayhem and all decency and rules of engagement were forgotten. The warriors didn't care for past relations and friendships. The only relation they cared is whether one is on their side or the enemy. Abhiman knew the teenage son of Arjun attacked Bhishma. He sprayed Bhishma with his arrows, but Bhishma didn't pay much attention to the young man and kept fighting the other Pandava warriors. Abhiman was adamant. He fired a couple of powerful weapons at Bhishma and broke his chariot mast. Bhishma couldn't ignore him any longer. He asked his chariot to turn towards Abhimanyu and began to spray Abhimanyu with arrows. The rapidity with which Bhishma shot his arrows was too overwhelming for Abhimanyu. He struggled to defend himself by dodging the arrows and countering them with his own. Watching Abhimanyu's distress, Bhim and Satyaki came to help. They attacked Bhishma with their arrows to relieve Abhimanyu from Bhishma's rage. Still, they were no match to Bhishma's skills. Alone, Bhishma fought all of them without any sign of weakness. On the other side of the battlefield, Uttar, the son of King Virat, mounted a huge elephant and attacked Shalya. The elephant trampled on Shalya's chariot and broke it to thousand pieces. Shalya jumped out of the chariot to save himself. Sitting on top of the elephant, Uttar shouted in joy, Take your last breath, Shalya! 
Today, I will kill you and offer your dead body to King Yudhishthir. He commanded his elephant to trample Shalya. <laughs> Poor Uttar was not aware of Shalya's power. As the elephant rushed to crush Shalya, Shalya picked up a deadly serpent-like weapon and hurled it at Uttar. The weapon cut through the air like a thunderbolt and struck Uttar on his chest and killed him before he could utter another word. Uttar's body rolled off the elephant back and lay motionless in front of Shalya's feet. When the news of Uttar's death reached his brother Sweta, he was furious with rage. How dare Shalya kill my brother Uttar? I promise I will kill Shalya before the battle ends today. He turned his chariot and drove as fast as he could to attack Shalya. The guard of a soldier tried to stop him. Sweta killed all of them and raced towards Shalya. Shalya, in the meantime, mounted on Kritabarna's chariot. Expecting retaliation from the Pandavas for Uttar's death, six Kaurava warriors, including Shalya's son, Rukmarat and Brihadbal, surrounded Shalya to protect him. A messenger came to Bhishma and said, Oh sir, Sweta, the son of King Virat is rampaging the Kaurava army. He is killing hundreds of Kaurava soldiers every minute. Please, please stop him. Bhishma, being the supreme commander of the Kaurava army, had to pay attention. He called his charioteer and said, Take me to Sweta. It seems King Virat will lose his second son today. When Sweta saw Bhishma approaching him, he shouted, Bhishma, get out of my way. I will avenge my brother's death and nobody can stop me, not even you. He picked up a heavy spear and hurled it at Bhishma with all his might. Bhishma shot an arrow at the spear and cut it to pieces. Enraged, Sweta began to shoot the deadliest of arrows towards Bhishma. None could touch Bhishma's body. Bhishma then picked up a fierce weapon and hurled it to Sweta's chariot. The weapon hit the target and with a huge explosion, killed Sweta's horses and his chariot. Sweta jumped out of his chariot, picked up his Shakti weapon and hurled it at Bhishma. The Shakti weapon is so powerful that any other man would have been killed by it in an instant. But Bhishma is no ordinary man. He raised his bow and with one shot of his arrow, he shattered the Shakti weapon, rendering it harmless. Sweta was furious. He picked up his mace and attacked Bhishma. With powerful blows, Sweta killed Bhishma's charioteer and his horses. Bhishma had no other option but to strike the ultimate blow. He picked up a divine weapon, uttered the codes to activate it, and then shot it at Sweta. The weapon escaped the bow with a huge roar, and before Sweta could understand anything, it pierced his armor and his chest and entered the earth behind him. Sweta fell to the ground and lay dead. Hearing the news of Sweta's death, the Kauravas began to dance in joy. The fall of a gallant warrior like Sweta was an enormous achievement. As the sun began to set, the conch shells rang out to notify the end of the battle for the day. The Kauravas and the Pandavas ceased their fight and retreated to their camps. The Pandavas felt depressed for losing two great warriors, Uttar and Sweta. The Kauravas felt jubilant and thought as long as Bhishma is with them, Nobody can snatch away their victory. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. 
The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.